Hey, I know that Andrew's really busy this week. Uh, we were going to talk and didn't get a chance to. He's traveling. And uh, I don't know how, you know, where you guys are, Heidi and Neil, in terms of if you really need our help with these things or you're already old hats. Uh, you know, I know you've taught this class before, so maybe you've already got whatever you need. Uh, I just thought, though, that since I know that Andrew's busy, I, I would just run by quickly let you guys know what I'm going to do in class, uh, unless Andrew comes up with something uh, to share. And um, I'm going to share this model with you so you could, you know, you could use it if you want to. Uh, basically, uh, there's two things. One is I'm going to run through, uh, you know, they, there's a, a really good uh, daylighting, well, I think it's good, uh, daylighting seminar that or workshop that, that uh, Climate Studio, the Climate Studio folks did. And I posted the, the links to it and the model uh, in those, the modeling links that I just gave to the class. So you have those. And just to remind you, if you haven't looked at it, there, there's a video you can watch um, that's, that, even get, that gives a lot of background at the beginning. But then they have this basic model um, that they run a number of daylight studies on. This isn't the actual one that I ran, uh, that I did with, with, in the class. So there's more models in it. You, you know, you remember that there's uh, quite a few daylighting models that are available. The main one I'm going to focus on in class is this daylight factor one because that's exactly what we did in the physical model last week. So they can just emulate that again, uh, what they did in the physical model first in Climate Studio. So I think that'll work well as a, um, first of all, just comparing a physical model to a, to a digital model. A di digital simulation, I think, is a great thing. And then um, I think this, that'll be a way for them to use the daylighting quickly um, as a, an iterative tool for designing. Uh, I know I'm going to try to, I've been mostly just getting to the concepts and getting them to, to isolate and play around with each different, you know, uh, passive strategy or, you know, um, different aspects of the things we've been talking about. And I don't think they're doing much design yet. So I'm going to try to have some time where they, they start collating all this stuff into something that's actually a design. Anyway, the point is, I think I'm going to then, first, I'm going to reacquaint myself with this video uh, and uh, and then just do it live in class. Um, you know, there's a point in time, uh, uh, point in time on luminance model we can, you can do. Uh, there's annual glare. There's a radiance rendering, which is from inside the building. Um, view analysis, and then all these different daylight um, availability. Some of these are lead-based. Um, so they're, they're, these are subsets within daylight availability. Um, so with lead, you can add blinds and you know get get a lead score. Um, anyway, so I thought I would just try to do my my best to give them sort of a an overview of what could be done. And sort of a some of it's looking forward to next semester because it has electric lighting in it and things like that. Um, so do that first in class. Then um, and that, you know use this model. This model, by the way, that they give you with the uh, video uh, has different um, like so. There's a baseline case, and there's different options, different facade options um, that you can use to model uh, to do different simulations and compare. Um, so it's a pretty nifty. Workshop that I think is worth uh, using if you have time to look at it, look at it. But then I built a, a very basic model in, um, that I'm going to use for a daylight factor analysis to give them an example of what they could do with their own models. Like I said, my idea is just that they first emulate whatever they did in their uh, their physical model daylighting studies. Try to do a, a you know apples to apples comparison of the same situation in Climate Studio, really interesting comparison there. And then to start, you, you can, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be obvious how much quicker it is to, to, to model in the in Climate Studio um, because you don't have to make physical changes unless you're really bad at, at um, Rhino, which is possible. I'm, I'm not, the, I'm not the most facile with it myself at this point because I haven't been using it recently. Anyway, let me just show you the basics of what I did and how this is set up. The main thing that they need to understand is it's all about setting up your layers very carefully because there's different, well, there's different ways to think of it. So it's, that's just maybe just to say that. Um, I have a basic, um, you know, I have a, a topo here that I brought in or that I built. I can't remember how you got this. Um, I have some context buildings. And then I have my basic um, project 
super basic at this point. And then I have different um, fenestration um, options that then I can run different simulations on different combinations. The basic way it's set up is that you have um, opaque and um, opaque surfaces and glazed glaze surfaces, and you have to just like before. Um, I mean, just like with the radiation map, we have to apply materials to whatever it is that we want to run, uh, whatever surfaces we want to be part of our simulation. Um, and then we need to define visible areas. And these are actually inside the building. So if I turn off my facade, I have a north living space and a south living space. And then, you know, so this could be much more complicated. Clearly, this is so super basic right now, and I'm just, I'm just trying to make an example. But, you know, these could be different, you know, whatever rooms you have. Uh, it's a little bit challenging with building this small to really do nuanced um, daylight analysis or daylight design. But anyway, it's, it's, maybe it's, a, it's the right thing to do uh, to keep it really simple. Then when you're defining these um, surfaces, you set also um, a, a work work plane offset, which is the white there, um, sensor inset, how many, you know, the sensor spacing, similar to what we did in the radiation map. Um, so this is the, the white is the offset. Um, and that's where the, the, the actual um, daylighting study occurs or simulation occurs. So those, those are, those are the main things that, that are, well, those are the sensors basically. So those are always on. Then, um, so let me just start with uh, all opaque to test the system. So, and one, one thing that's different about this than with the radiation map is you cannot see um, what it is that you've modeled. So you can see it if you turn off, for example, I'm going to, the first one I did, I, by the way, I, I numbered these or I lettered them. I tried numbering them and when I got to 10, it did not, it would not, uh, it did not see 10 as 10. It saw it as a one and a zero. And so then it put it right after one, you know how that works. So, um. This was the best I could, uh, the, the quickest way I could find to make these in an order that made sense to me because I wanted them in chronological order or in an order that I saw as chronological. So the first thing I did was I ran a simulation with no windows just to show that um, both my, my north and my south um, surfaces have 0%. And this is uh, daylight factor, so exactly what we did uh, last week. It's the mean and the median. So these are not the two different spaces. These are mean and median. But these are the, the two spaces here. The north and the, and the south both have zero um, mean and median percentage of daylight factor. And if I turn off my um, walls, I, I see that there's, yeah, as to be expected, no light got inside. So that was that's a good test, just as a, a baseline. Then uh, next I ran, uh, I'm saying, so DF is um, daylight factor fenestration south one. So that means I had this fenestration set up. Uh, and then I have to, you know, you have to figure out what's, I, I turn off my south face and then I'm leaving this, all the other, all the, all the other uh, facades the same. Um, when I ran that, I got 2.4% mean, 1.5% median. Uh, and we can see the difference, the difference between the south and the north here. And I can turn off my um, opaque surface or, or my, my model and I can see the, the interior um, daylighting simulation that's the uh, you know the visible representation of the numeric uh, and we have the same like with the radiation map we can go and look through and um, at each sensor and see it's it's actual uh, readout next thing I did then was I changed my southern um, glazing to be a larger single window and that came up with 4.2 and 2.6 percent um, daylight factor and the, you know, the, the pattern looks like this, which, which makes sense. So at least it's, you know, it's a sensible visual interface here. Uh, then let's just, I'll just run through these quickly just to kind of show you the, the thought process. Then I started doing some, uh, design, um, tweaks, trying to see, well, I won't even say what I was trying to see because I just want to go through this quickly. I'll just show you, um, some differences. Uh, so with, so I have what S1, W1, and the, the point here I think to make to them is that it's really important that they uh, na name their 
runs very clearly so that they know what is in the run. Because like I said, it will not show up like it did in the radiation maps. And when we clicked on the radiation maps, you could turn off the simulation down here, on or off. That doesn't have an effect right here. I guess it'll have an effect on the what we see inside with that outside. Um, so you have to you have to really understand what it is that you modeled, or it will be of no value. Um, and you have to test it because, for example, um, like if I had left on this west wall, um, see now this is actually there's a wall behind this window. If, you, if I hadn't noticed that, then that would mess up my my results. Uh, that's why I colored my fenestration um, layers. Uh, I, I have them all orange. You know, so it's just about organization. And then this one um, dropped down from the W from the um, the large south window, but is, is an increase from just the south, which we would expect. Um, and what's going on here? So we can start if we have a target um, daylight factor that we're that we're shooting for, then we can start playing around with how do we get it to also tie in with our other strategies. Like if we're if we're if we have a direct gain uh, south collecting. Um, solar heat source for the winter then we then we can um, try to maximize that and then uh, add to add to that solar heat gain um, that also has a daylighting factor um, or you know a daylighting component then we can adjust our other fenestration based on that you know and that's a really that's the main thing I see them doing in this class is how do you combine these different strategies right um, okay and so then if I turn off my just so we can again go back and compare. Um, so this was the first. This was with the, the the large south window. This is with the small south windows and the west makes sense. Um, if I add in a big north window um, with the west and the south, now I'm at this is a you know a nice amount of daylighting. Um, if I then come in and add in an awning which let me show you that here's an awning that i'm adding um and so what is this this is awning south one north one and uh west one so that means i gotta turn off the north and turn on the east um okay so then that's uh, here's here's the uh, the fenestration layout for this model with the the awning, and we see that we have um, a lowered uh, mean daylight factor. Um, it's let's see, it's much lower on the south, a little bit on the north, much lower on the south than it was for obvious reasons. Um, the next, I said, okay, well, well, what if I add in context buildings so that would be these um, and I t and I kept the awning and that um, knocked my daylighting quite down quite a bit then I said well do I need this awning because I um, have all this context is probably blocking that sun anyway um, you know etc so I started I played I played with uh, with a number of different setups that one basically was without the awning um, 6.1 let's see what that looks like on the inside yeah, pretty consistent. Um, again, hard to get too nuanced with such a small space. I also then played around with, um, I'll just leave this on. I changed the surface of the ground. So this is uh, ground surface. So I'm back to, I'm going I'm to compare this to Fenestration South 1. So I'm at 2.4 with the ground as grass. I changed it to concrete and went to 2.8 for a mean or 1.9 for a median. Let's see what was it over here. 2.4, 1.5. When I change it to metal, which is you know ridiculous, but a reflective surface, um, I got a, a, a pretty large jump. Um, anyway, just establishing that there is there is daylighting effect from the surface um, of the ground, and we could have done the same thing with these buildings. Um, so there's a lot of even just if we stick with the daylighting factor, there's a lot to play around with, and so that's why not and it, it's not playing around. All I mean, it is playing around, but it's also um, there's a lot of nuance here that if they're trying to start to, if you're, now we're talking about sun as heat or the blockage of heat and as daylight, as light. And those are two, as we know, completely different um, aspects of the solar resource. And I think that a week of 
just play, just experimenting with how you maximize um, the, the, the effects that you want from both of those in two climates is a lot of work. So then I'm not thinking that uh, I need or we need to get them to really do any of these other daylighting um, uh, simulations, though it'd be good to show them in class if they're possible. I'm really trying to, the more I use this interface, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but compared to other modeling interfaces, it's so easy to use and so quick and also so fast to move between different simulations. So I think it's really a good tool for them to, to um, especially if they're going to be using Rhino through at least the rest of their careers at, at um, NYIT, um, that they really come to um, be very comfortable with it. So that's what I'm going to keep trying to, to push them to use it a lot. And I think a good way of doing that is to let them have a lot of time on one one comparative set of simulations, the you know the the direct gain versus the daylighting. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I will I'm going to go and just send you this model in case that helps. I have no idea what again. You, know, you may be like doing something that's uh, more advanced than this, or you, you may not need any of this kind of review. I definitely needed it because I'd completely forgotten how to use this simulation last time I did it was this summer. All right, talk to you guys later.